Rider Pride! Hello everybody out there in YouTube Nation. Hope everybody's keeping well, staying out of trouble. It's, uh, winter's still here in Saskatchewan. Don't matter what the calendar says. It says it's supposed to be the first day of spring. And ride a squirrel. Oh, ride, you missed a squirrel. Path is real icy, hard as a rock. Yeah, bring on spring already. That's enough of this crap. Yeah, usually I got my beard shaved off by now and getting all psyched up for training camp. But it's a uh, crap. The paths are in terrible shape. All ice. Yeah, we had a couple warm days and then she turned rock solid. Oh uh, well, what's happening in the CFL and the Rough Riders? They got uh, signed one more guy. Well, a couple, I guess. They signed a, a, a lineman. Another squirrel. Squirrels, riders! Squirrels! Come here! Oh boy, he's got hunting squirrels like crazy today. A lot of them around. Must be mating season, spring, I guess. I don't know when the squirrels mate. Anyway. Uh, yeah, the Rough Riders, anyway, they signed a couple more guys. Uh, that uh, defensive lineman, RJ McIntosh. Uh, big dude, 6'4", 290 or something like that. Good size. Got some credentials in the NFL. That's about what y'all you can hope for. Grab these guys that don't stay connected in the NFL. At least they've got some playing time down there, so they've got to have some skills. And uh, he's got the size, that's for sure. So he'll be interesting to watch at camp. And then a really, a really interesting one, they signed another quarterback. They got that Jake Cohn. He's out of uh, Notre Dame. Had a little bit of interest in the NFL. You wonder why he didn't stick. He's definitely got the size. He's a got. He's six three two twenty. Uh, he did have some rushing touchdowns, so maybe he can run the ball. But according to the to the statistics and the the write-ups I've read about him is uh, he's more of a stay, he's got a good arm, he's not much of a scrambler, but yeah, maybe he'll fit it in with a bigger field. You never know until you get a look at him up here, but really like his size, really comes in handy. You can see over the linemen. Because uh, I really don't have a lot of faith in Harris making the whole season. Sad to say, but that's just the way I see it. Uh, he's a quality quarterback, but you got to keep him standing up. He's not much of a rusher either. Uh, so, I'm going to need somebody, I'm sure, in the end. That's for sure. Boy, the squirrels are real active today, that's for sure. Riders going crazy out here. Squirrels think it's spring anyway. But that's about all with the rough riders. Now they'll be uh, all down there. Their uh, general managers and coaches are all in Winnipeg. I had to stop recording for a bit here. The trains are going crazy here today. Going every direction, banging away here. Uh, where was it? Oh yeah, the CFL combine's going on for prospects for the this year's draft. I think that happens in the end of April 30th. And all the uh, coaches and general managers are in Winnipeg. Uh, testing these guys and interviewing them 
you name it. I'm noisy. But uh, uh, that's a tricky draw for the CFL uh, uh, rookies because it's not like the NFL. They draft them, they know they want to get in the NFL. But with the uh, drafting a lot of these guys, they're playing college down in the States, some of them, and uh, there'll be lots of interest in the NFL on these top prospects, which is a good thing as far as I'm concerned. You, you sports has really, really gotten a lot better training in the university and a lot more uh, uh, quality players coming out of U Sports. And plus, uh, they go down and uh, play in colleges down in the United States where football is king. And uh, so for the CFL guys, you know, in the draft here in the end of April, oh boy, too much noise. I'll come back to you in a second here. This train's just banging away like crazy here. They must be hooking up longer, making longer trains. Okay, we got a little bit away from the trains anyway. Pretty noisy out there today, that's for sure. <coughs> Where was he? Oh, that CFL combines going on in Winnipeg. It's had the draft. You know, it's it's hard for CFL teams to know which guy to pick. You gotta ask these guys the right questions, you know. Are they even willing to play in the CFL because they have a lot of different options in the NFL. They got the training roster, practice roster, they got the futures contract, they got all sorts of which pay way better than a starting guy in the CFL. Big time. So you have to find out if these guys are even willing to sign on the dotted line. All right. Hi, buddy. Treacherous some places. Huh. That's their biggest problem. And then whether you take them or not, if they uh, get cut from the NFL, you know, like, are they still willing to come back and, and play for you? That's the big question. That's a hit or miss. And that draft, that's for sure, it's sad, but it's the way it is. And uh, hard to get the right guy out of the, out of the draft. And you don't want to miss a guy that possibly could help you and will play. That's, a, like I said, it's hit and miss in the CFL big time, whether you pick these guys up or not. But there's a lot of guys been added through that CFL draft. That's for sure. Uh, come on through, Rye. Boy, it's slippery everywhere. It's total ice. Got my walking stick. Keeps me upright a bit. Oh, what else is happening? Uh, oh, they might talk. I heard more talk about that changing the kickoff rule and the, pretty soon they'll be doing the rules committee they'll be sitting down with the general managers and the players association for rule changes and who knows you know that, that's one of them that's been rumors about is a kickoff and uh, you know, they want to change it it's mainly for player safety. That's the only reason they want to do it. They don't want to do it in the CFL, change them because that's one of the more exciting plays that happens in games is kickoffs. And you get in the return, and a lot of times the returners are your popular players, you know. And, uh, I can see Pinball there in Toronto. He wouldn't want to change it that way was his bread and butter but 
you know, they can't go to rules like the NFL. The NFL, in fact, is looking at changing theirs too because it's pathetic what they do. They might as well not even bloody well kick off. You know, they kick them all straight in the end zone. You know, as it is, the kicking game is went away in the CFL lots anyway because lots of times after a field goal, they don't elect to get the ball kick. They elect to take it at the 40 yard line, probably 90% of the time. I don't know what the stat is on that, but you know, I'm sure that most of the time they take it at the 40. I'm not sure. Comment down below what you think they should do to change that if rule. The only thing I can think of is put the uh, lines closer together. So they're not getting such a running start at each other. Still kick the ball off back there, but put the lines closer together so they're not coming at themselves. Big boys coming at them at full bore and the possibility of injuries are pretty high. And uh, I don't know what they're gonna do. I just hope they don't change it and make it uh, take the play out of the game. Is to me, it's, uh, you don't go for a beer when it's going to be a kickoff because possibility of a big play. NFL, maybe they do want that. Everybody might as well go for a drink when they're going to kick the ball off in the NFL. It's a total waste of time. Total. Ah, and the only other news in the CFL is that Chad Kelly. I read a piece today about the uh, organization standing behind him and they say he's our starting quarterback you know so obviously Maple Leaf Sports one of the biggest outfits in Canada are gonna stand behind him and uh, uh, they they've obviously talked to him and uh, and the lawyers are saying, we're not gonna pay this out. Like, for Maple Leaf Gardens uh, sports guys, what, uh, she wants 270 or something thousand? Uh, they spend more than that on a, on a Christmas party or going to take the execs out for lunch. So they would have paid that out if they thought they didn't didn't have a chance of winning the, the uh, court case. Uh, I said before, so he said, she said, so wait till it plays out in, in, in court. And uh, CFL can't do anything either. They can investigate all they want. I can tell you exactly what's going to come with that. They'll say, well, we're going to wait till. Uh, comes out in court before they do any action on Kelly or the, the the Toronto Argonauts. What can they do? You just open yourself up for more lawsuits. You gotta let the court deal with it. It was Toronto made a big damn mistake. I said this before. He uh, they should have never ever made him the franchise quarterback, Kelly. You know. He has a bad rap for all this already, you know. It's not like they didn't know about his his uh, way he is, and but that doesn't apply to this case, you know. It doesn't have a whole a whole lot of merit, and uh, it's it's each case in particular how they handle it. And uh, to me, it looks like the Maple Police Sports is standing behind him, so that's. The main thing, you know, I'm quite surprised if, if it's true what they're saying, but you know, it sounds like they're sticking to their guns, and uh, that lady better have a really good case, otherwise, forget it, you know. If it just comes down to more he said, she said, you better have a lot of witnesses. 
Otherwise, you'll never get this thing overturned. Like I said, you know, I think the real loser earlier, the whole thing are Argos fans and a bit of the CFL. They don't need any of this bad publicity. That's for sure. It's never a good thing. The Argos, though, they should have made a guy like Kelly with his background pay him all that money. And I said before, I didn't really think Kelly was all that anyway. And he proved that in the Eastern Final. He just pretty well tossed the game away. It was absolutely pathetic. You know, <laughs> he, a couple of his passes, the only people that could have caught it were three of the defenders. You know, like it should have never been thrown. And then he doesn't even own up to it. After the game, he said, oh, I shouldn't have been playing. I had a concussion. What a bunch of baloney. Doesn't own up to how bad he actually played. Like I said, I would have never signed him in the first place. If I did, it would be a all incentive and have a good boy clause in it. Otherwise, you're dust. Right, well, we'll see how that turns out. Like I said, nothing's gonna happen. As far as I'm concerned, CFL can't do it. They're saying Ambrose is weak. Well, you be commissioner and see what happens if the, the case does go uh, against the girl and you suspend and take Kelly's money away. This ends up costing you money in the end. You gotta let the process play out no matter what. It's just common sense. I absolutely hate these he said, she said things anyway. You know, you never know who's gonna come out and who has the most money to win the case, basically. Sad but true. Anyway, comment down below what you think of this Kelly thing, what the CFL should do. And uh, if the Argos are standing up for the wrong thing, I don't know. To me, they're doing their, they've obviously made their mind up that they're gonna fight it if they're standing behind Kelly, so. That's the way it is. Comment down below, I love the comments. Anyway, that's about it, the video's getting long enough. Thanks everybody for watching. Hit that subscribe button, really helps me out. Maybe, uh, like I said, I asked for a defensive lineman, maybe Mason and O'Day are listening to us fans and uh, getting the stuff that we think they need. I highly doubt it, but every subscription I get, maybe O'Day will, or Mace will say, hey, maybe we should let give this guy an interview or something. It'd be a laugh. I'd really appreciate it. I think it'd be fun to get old timer uh, perspective of, of the game and ask more personal questions of what the real fans or the people that I talk to anyway think and uh, that's what we need in the Rough Riders more accountability to us old timers <laughs> and the young of course that uh, you know because without the young the CFL's dead 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 they need those younger fans they're trying to address it like I said they tried it with their failure with the women one and thought they'd get on the bandwagon of TikTok and just blew up in their face uh, old timer like me didn't phase me at all anyway thanks again for watching and uh, I'll get back to you as soon as anything exciting happens in the CFL or around the league here and uh, what happened with the Rough Riders guess the main thing coming up is that draft Let's see who they can pick up there which is important but like I said it's a very tricky situation of who they pick and who they don't anyway can't wait for training camp to start 
I'll be there every day if I can be and hope to talk to you soon. Go Riders, go.